The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Hello and welcome to the Monday Night Property Edition of Your Money, Your Call. I'm Lisa Montgomery from Resi Home Loans and tonight as usual the panel and I will be taking your calls and answering your emails on all things property. We've got a great show for you this evening so make sure that you stay tuned and hopefully we'll be able to assist you if you are beginning or continuing your property investing journey. There are two ways that you can get on the, in on the conversation tonight and you can simply call 1300 30 35 and speak Speak with us or you can send us an email at property at skynews.com.au. Let's start the program with the news of the week. And according to the Sydney Morning Herald website, Sydney's home auction market recorded its second consecutive weekend clearance rate above 77% on Saturday. This weekend's 77.3% result was similar to last weekend's 77.7%, .7%, which bucked the month-long trend. Activity in the Sydney auction market had clearly clearly been tracking downwards over June and into July, with clearance rates averaging below 75%. This is uh, well below the boom time results that had averaged over 80% earlier in the year. With just 404 auctions listed, Saturday is likely to have been the low point for listings this winter, with numbers now set to rise through spring. The Northern Beaches recorded another stunning clearance rate at the weekend as the strong revival in buyer activity in that region continues. It's clearly led the other regions with a 94.7% result. The Inner West recorded a clearance rate of 87.8%, followed by the City and East at 85.7%, the South at 84.1% and the Lower North Shore with 81.5%. These regional results indicate that Sydney's prestige and Inner West Inner City markets continue to be the top performers at auction. Now, now with me tonight to discuss the news and answer all your property related questions is Noel Petrahilos from BMT Tax Depreciation and Peter Kalousis, the property professor. So if you have any questions about property, depreciation or finance tonight, just call us on 1300 30 34 35 or email us at property at skynews.com.au. Well hello to you both. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. And welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Big show tonight, let's hope. Big show, exciting show. And hopefully we'll get lots of expert. calls. <laughs> yes. What do you think about these uh, auction results that we saw in Sydney? I'll go to you first, Peter, if I might. Just um, a bit of a, a bucking of the trend there with um, some clearance rates over, over that 75% mark. Do you think that's going to continue? Are we seeing a turn? Well, providing the number of properties going to auction continues to stay relatively low, as was mentioned in, in that news report. And then I can see clearance rates remaining uh, relatively high, which is very, very good for Sydney homeowners. Look, I think so too. I'm just, you know, a little sceptical as to how things are going to go through into spring, um, primarily because there's just not a lot of stock mm. on the market right now. Um, you know, I study particularly the Lower North Shore market and, um, and quite closely, and there's just nothing out there. I mean, Noel, what do you think about that? Look, there's, there's a less stock and uh, the clearance rates are still strong as that article says. We're in the middle of winter. We just had our coldest weekend I think uh, this year so far and I think people, are the fact that people are still going out there and buying is really exciting mm -hmm. and to see some of those high clearance rates that we've sort of seen in some like the northern beaches and the inner west I think is fantastic. Going back a couple of years ago they were in the 50s you yeah. know, and now mm -hmm. we're seeing very consistent yeah. behaviour mm -hmm. of the 80s, um, some of those suburbs showing in the 90%. I think it's really exciting mm -hmm. and then leading into towards the end of winter and into the springtime, which is when everyone's buying, if we can hold this, this sort of clearance rate up, I think it's going to push through into a pretty solid spring season. Let's hope so. Yeah. Peter, what do you see in other markets, uh, particularly the Brisbane and the uh, Melbourne markets? Are you seeing strong figures there as well? Yeah. Uh we had a very slow period, as Noel said, uh, a couple of years ago, all around the country, and all of those markets are now picking up. Brisbane's a little bit slower than others, lagging behind some of the others, mm. but Melbourne had a very good year last year. Its winter auction clearance rates are doing quite well. Mm. Adelaide also doing 
quite well. Perth, not many auctions in Perth, so it's very hard to gauge the property market based on auction clearance rates in Perth. Yes. But the whole country is in positive territory, which is uh, great news. <laughs> Well, it is great news, and I think the other bit of good news is that we we were all at the um, mm. uh, all of our companies were at the uh, the property and uh, investment in the home buyers show on the weekend in Sydney, yeah. and we had I think record numbers coming through that show. Peter, how did you find it? Yeah, look, Sunday in particular was fantastic. Uh, there were all the all the theatres were packed out for all the different presentations. So lots of people, especially in Sydney. Uh, looking for information on property, which means, you know, things could go particularly well for the Melbourne show, mm. which is on uh, the 30th and the 31st of August. So there'll be a similar type of speakers there, yep. I, I imagine. Now, there seem to be people with a huge thirst for property in that room. I mean, I know that the numbers, particularly for uh, my speaking engagement, were, were very high. And I know for Brad Beer, who was yeah, doing the BMT, yeah. um, uh, representing BMT, there was just, you know, standing room only. So, so uh, it, it seemed like it didn't matter what the topic was, whether it was finance, <laughs> depreciation, property development, how to make a lot of money. There was just oh, lots the people, of people scrambling everywhere. and scribbling. It was it was quite incredible. And depreciation I think depreciation is such an exciting topic, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and to have standing room only. That's I think standing room only. <laughs> it's very it's fantastic. Look, let's go to our first email, and it's from Lawrence. And Lawrence writes: I invested in a four-bedroom property in Ipswich back in 2010. I admit I made some mistakes with the cash flow at the time but fortunately with interest rates now at an all-time low it's made holding the property somewhat easier now my question is should I stick with the long-term plan of holding this property and support the negative cash flow I should add the property always rents without issue that's from Lawrence straight to you on this one Peter okay Lawrence uh, the fact that it's negatively geared, well, welcome to the club because most property <laughs> investors have negatively geared property. But if I keep it simple, if it's costing you $100 a week, which is 5000 a year, but the property is going up by, say, ten or 20000 a year, then in the end you're in front. So if you, think, if you still think you've got a good property and the capital growth is outweighing your negative cash flow and you can see that to continue, then why sell? That's right. No, your thoughts. I mean, Lawrence actually says that he made some mistakes at the beginning with his cash flow. That's sort of a little bit scary to me. Your thoughts? It is a little bit scary. Make sure you got your numbers in order. Oh. I mean, all the deductions that you're claiming, depreciation is very important. But I wouldn't go getting rid of this property right now. Your original plan was long term. It should always be long term with property. Oh. And Ipswich, although it hasn't done a whole heap over the last four or five years, it's just started to show some signs. And a lot of those, that, that corridor between Ipswich and Brisbane, been showing really good signs over the last 12 months. I'd be sticking it out and um, and hang on to it now. You know, the last five years, as I said, has been a bit slow. I think it's yeah. time to, uh, to to show some growth, hopefully. So I'd be I'd be staying there for sure. Yeah, I agree. It's interesting. Uh, on the weekend, I had a slide in my presentation, and it was just one line, and it says, "Whatever you do, do something." And uh, I, I bring that up because there's so many people fall foul to procrastination. Now, I'm not suggesting that you know you go against your numbers because clearly Lawrence you know, perhaps had some issues with these numbers. But procrastination is one of those big things, Peter, isn't it, where people just don't do anything. That's right. Analysis paralysis is what I call it, where people do all the research, they go to all the seminars, all the expos, yes. but in, they do all the courses, but yes. in the end they don't do anything. No, because, no, they're looking for the perfect property, aren't they? They are. They're looking for the perfect property. And, and really, they've just got to, if, if it all adds up and the recipe's right, which yeah. it often is, and it's an investment loan, and you use the tax breaks that you've got available to you, the recipe looks good, I say go for it. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. see, some properties in your portfolio will perform better than others, yep. and often it's the ones that you don't expect are going to perform <laughs> well that do perform well. And uh, you just got to just accept that as part of the rich tapestry of any portfolio. That's right. It's a long term thing. It and is if indeed. you're going into property um, anywhere and with a long term, I'm not saying anywhere, anywhere, but yeah. as long as you have that long term plan, I think, uh, and you do your research and you've got your numbers right, you shouldn't have a problem. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have to take a short break, but stay with us. Tonight, as always, we'll be giving away one of Margaret's books to the question deemed to be the most deserving of the night. And tonight, we'll be giving away Margaret's new book, How to Achieve 
property success. In this book, Margaret takes the very best from her first three books with updated information and new content, resulting in a one-stop shop for property investors. And if you'd like to get your hands on this free copy, all you need to do is call us on 1300 30 34 35, regardless of what's on television, or email us at property at skynews.com.au with your question. But make sure you stay watching until the end of the show to see if you're the lucky winner. We're off for that break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Monday Night Property Edition of Your Money, Your Call. I'm Lisa Montgomery from Resi Home Loans and tonight we're taking your questions and hopefully providing some answers to help you get ahead with your property investing journey. With me on the panel this evening is Noel Petrahilos from BMT Tax Depreciation and Peter Galuzis, the property professor. And we would love to answer your questions, so pick up the phone and call us. Uh, the number is 1300 30 34 35 or of course you can also email us at property at skynews.com.au and we're going to our first caller and it's Grant he's from WA Grant how can we help you uh, listen, you know, so I'm first time investor, so um, just hunting around for somewhere to invest. I have um, taken on board a property group to help me out with the ins and outs of that sort of thing, and they're suggesting South Australia, more of the uh, Murray Bridge area, that sort of thing. And I was just wondering what the guys thought on that area and sort of the growth rate that it should go through. Sure. Okay. Thank you for that, Grant. I might go straight to our expert in uh, South Australia, Peter Kalusis. Peter, your thoughts on Murray Bridge? Uh, Grant, I very heartened to hear that you're interested in South Australia, a very low entry point, which is a good thing. Murray Bridge is approximately 70 k's from uh, Adelaide, uh, a country town. Uh, it used to be quite good so far as industry was concerned. Now, a lot of that industry has moved out. If you're looking to invest in any sort of country town, as Margaret would say, have a look at those capital growth drivers. What is encouraging people to move there? What is in what uh, and what are people doing there? What sort of jobs are there? So Murray Bridge wouldn't be number one on my list. I, there would be other areas that I'd be looking at. But again, if your property club is doing the right thing, they're doing the research, so they should have some of the answers as, as to what is driving the capital growth in that particular area. Mm, Noel, your thoughts? Look, I'm, I don't, not as familiar with South Australia, but um, we hear a lot about the southern part of, uh, of Adelaide down towards Seaford and Christie's Beach and, and, and the fact that Adelaide as a whole is, is landlocked by mountains and sea and it can only go north and south. Um, and look, the, the buy-in there is, is still relatively good. The yields are strong. Um, so just do your research. He's obviously with a club and he's getting some advice, which is a good sign. Mm. Just make sure you're cross-checking that with information that's available on the internet. Um, check the, the, you know, how long properties are sitting on the market. If you can, it looks like he's from WA, he may not be able to drive down the street, but I like to feel comfortable and go for a drive down the street. I know a lot of people buy from interstate and, and uh, just walk like but if you go down the, drive down the street at about six o'clock at night, you really get a feel for the, for the people there and people start wandering out of their homes and what it's like. But look, if the numbers are right and you're low buying and your yields and you've got a good history of capital growth, um, it sounds all right. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, Peter, when we're sort of looking at some of these property groups that are um, assisting people to get into property investment, what we would hope is that they're doing that without any uh, commercial um, uh, gain for themselves and that that research is actually quite robust in yeah. relation to choosing that. And hopefully these properties or this property isn't in an area that is a new area where there's no historical historical sales data. Um, what are your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, look, Lisa, I'm glad you mentioned that because one thing I did want to bring up to Grant was, you know, we're hoping that the property club is doing the right thing by you, but one indication, it's not a guarantee, one indication is if the only thing that they are selling is brand new house and land packages in new estates, I'd be thinking very carefully about investing in that particular property in that particular country town mm. because brand new properties do not suit everyone. Fantastic for depreciation which is great if you've got a huge tax problem. But there are other aspects that you need to look at rather than the tax benefits when you are investing in property. 
Absolutely. So hopefully that's helped you, Grant, with your decision. While we're here, let's just keep talking about Adelaide yeah. because we were talking about that before we came on air tonight and we were talking about the median price uh, trending upward there for houses in Adelaide itself, Peter, and um, I think it's peaked now, hasn't it? It has. So it, it's reached a new peak. So uh, a lot of the country had hit its low or hit its peak in October 2010. Mm. Uh, all of us went down. Sydney is well above that. Melbourne is also well above that. Adelaide has just peaked above that, but Brisbane is still below that. So that, that's one bit of good news for Adelaide. The mm. other bit of good news is I did some research and presented it last week, and it's a little known fact that for the first six months of this year, Adelaide is the best performing capital city so far as houses are concerned, and Adelaide is the best performing city so far as units are concerned. Sydney is number two in each of those rankings. Wow. But it, it's not very well known because not many people really care about Adelaide because it's, you know, only a small country town to many people. But for us that live there, it's some excellent news because as most of the country has experienced uh, prices going down, it's great that uh, not only are we going up, but we're actually leading the pack at the moment. And that's really interesting because we talk about Adelaide, as you've said as well, Noel, on this show all the time in terms of being a great opportunity for investors, particularly in some of those outerlying areas and in the south that we've talked about, um, Christie's Beach, Seaford, where the infrastructure is just really starting to come into its own, isn't it? It is. So we've got the electrification of the train line down south. The train line has now been extended to Seaford. Yes. Uh, there's a, uh, a dual expressway which will be completed next month. So all of this infrastructure means uh, very good things so far as property is concerned. As somebody who puts his money where his mouth is, like Margaret does, I've, I've finished building a couple of townhouses in Port Nalunga, which is right next door to Christie's Beach, yeah. and I've kept them for rent because I truly believe those areas in the Onkaparinga Council uh, are great for long-term capital growth. Well, that's mm. certainly an endorsement given that you've got, you've got <laughs> property there now. Well, your thoughts about that too, Noel? Yeah. Because you've got an increase, haven't you? In we, we have, and we've, at the end of the financial year, been quantity surveyed as we sit down and just uh, do all of our data and put it all together and we've noticed it's been our best year ever in Adelaide. Wow. Um, the 11-12 financial year was a little bit quiet. Um, the, this, this financial year just gone um, is our best for, for South Australia and we've seen um, north and south surprisingly enough mm. um, obviously the number of investors so whenever there's investors there's investor activity there they're buying depreciation schedules in those areas um, so that's exciting to see as well. I think uh, Adelaide's got some great uh, there's been, always been good opportunity in the in the short term, past short term, but I think there's even a lot more opportunity coming up. Certainly is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there's still plenty of time left, and if you have a question for anyone on the panel this evening, all you need to do is call us on 1300 30 34 35 or email us at property at skynews.com.au. We're off for a short break, but don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching the Monday Night Property Edition of Your Money, Your Call. I'm Lisa Montgomery and we've been getting through some great questions tonight and hopefully offering a few insights in how you can become a more informed property purchaser, seller or investor. If you call or email tonight, you'll be speaking with Mr Noel Petrohelos from BMT Tax Depreciation and Mr Peter Kalousis, the property professor. So all you need to do is pick up the phone and call 1300 30 34 35 or email us at property at skynews.com.au and don't forget you can also get a copy of uh, Margaret's latest book if you give us a call tonight. So we're going to go straight to the phones and we've got a caller and his name is Paul. He's from Tweed Heads. Paul, what can we do for you this evening? Thank you, Lisa. Lisa, I was just inquiring what the panel thought about a New England town of Tenderfield. Um, John Lindemann has actually forecast this town as a future hotspot. I just wanted to know what the panel thought, if you knew anything of Tenerfield. Okay. Um, have you got other rental properties at all, Paul? You do? On, on northern uh, New South Wales, I have, yeah. You do. And yeah. so you're looking at Tenerfield 
based on John's recommendation? Well, yes, um, and and just the buy-in price. It's a very low uh, low entry it price. Is. It is. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll go to the panel and see what they think about Tenterfield. Peter, Tenterfield. Uh, well, I'm not from New South Wales, so I don't have a huge idea of Tenterfield. But there are some some basic questions that you need to ask that Margaret would also be asking you to ask yourself. So, did, um, did John Linderman say why he thought Tenterfield was going to do particularly well? I think we might have actually... We might have, lo okay. it, yes, All right. we might so, have lost him, yes. Well, I, well, I'd be looking at the reasons why you or, or anybody else thinks that Tenterfield is a great place to invest in. Forget about the low entry price, because just because something is cheap doesn't mean that it's undervalued. Mm -hmm. But look at what do you think is going to drive prices? Are there lots of maybe government offices being relocated there? Is, it, is there an industry setting up there? So, because basically the more jobs that go to an area, the more people will need to live there, therefore it puts pressure on house prices because of increased demand. So they are the sorts of questions that I would be asking uh, before I bought in Tenterfield. Mm, I agree. Noel, your thoughts? Yeah, look, I don't know Tenterfield as well, but I mean, it makes up part of that New England area, I believe, uh, which includes Tamworth, Armidale, Gunnedah, those areas. And look, there, there's not just one industry there. There's a really strong, there's, there's mining and there's also a really strong agricultural base that has a good history there. Mm. So um, what Peter's saying is dead right. Look at, the, look at what the drivers are going to be. And I always look at the employment history and what's bringing money to those towns because those small regional areas, yeah, they can be cheap, as you said, and, and the rents are often strong, so the yields look look great so maybe it is a good cash flow positive option mm. um, but have a look what's going to maintain that because you, you do want to have a bit of a balance and get a bit of capital growth going mm. so if there's something close that's happening that's going to be injecting money into that town um, I, I don't have a problem with those small regional areas especially commercial buildings because they just have one main street mm. and they have a, a little shopping district that everyone goes to from the area whether they be farmers or people from the towns they all crowd around those areas so those little commercial buildings that you get in the main street do quite well they yield really well and they've got good solid long-term leases that you can uh, that are the really good solid investments yeah look I agree I agree with both of you and I think that it's um I've, I've seen John speak and he has a, a very interesting formula um, which has been proven over time so he would definitely have his reasons for recommending Tenderfield but I think that the the best research at the moment that Paul could do is the research that he's that you're suggesting Noel that he does and also you Peter does himself so he's going to really analyze to see if those growth drivers are there and not just there for the short term but there for the long term. Yep. Yeah, we definitely. hope that helps you Paul. We're going to go to our next caller and that's Gordon. Gordon's from Sydney. Gordon how can we help you this evening? Oh, thank you very much and I appreciate the panel listening to this question. Uh, my partner and I were talking earlier tonight and we have a property which we want to sell. We've been wanting to sell for about a year and a half now but the property has been so depressed that we haven't done, taken any action. The, um, the property is owned equally between us and it's negatively geared. We're currently paying 8% interest and um, the property is located in Bonnells Bay which is halfway approximately between Sydney and Newcastle. Yes. Uh, could the panel give some advice as to how we should proceed, whether we should sell it or hold off for a period of time, depending on, on the market? OK, Gordon, just a couple of questions before we move forward. Yes. How long have you held that property for? Uh, for about four years now. Four years, and um, it's, 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 not perf it's performing negatively at the moment, is it? It's n not grown in value at all? Uh, I would say that it has probably, it, it dropped in value when there was a downturn in the market. Right. And we, we I actually, we secured um, about a $70,000 reduction in the price off what the vendors were asking for it. So I feel that we've not really lost money uh, by owning it over the period, but it's gone nowhere. Now that the market is starting to pick up, and particularly in Sydney, we thought that now would be the best time to, to sell it because interest rates may in the near future go up again. Um, or the market may um, um, run out of heat. Uh, two further questions. Uh, how much equity do you think you've got in there in that property at the moment? We have very little equity. We'd probably have around about 2%. Right. And that 8% interest rate, did you fix that loan? It was a fixed loan, yes, but it's now gone over to uh, a P&I. Right. And it's still at 8%. 
Yes. Gordon, you need to do something about that post haste. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why it's sitting at that 8% rate, but I would definitely be approaching your lender uh, for a reduction. And if not, I'd be looking at um, maybe changing lenders because there's a good opportunity for you to get a rate below 5%, at or below 5%. So you're paying way too much on that. And that could actually help you. I won't go on about that now. I'm going to go straight to the panel and see if they've got some suggestions for you, Gordon. Okay, Peter, to you first. Well, I'd like to follow on from where you left off, yes. Lisa. That eight percent interest rate—that that, that's a killer. Goodness so, me. Gordon, if for no other reason, if you could go buy another property and get a five percent interest rate, the same property, you're going to be well in front anyway. I mean, there are other other things you need to consider before you sell. But one of the big things is the one that Lisa mentioned. Mm. You need to sort out that interest rate because that is huge. Absolutely. I, I I don't know of anybody on an eight percent well, interest I, I rate. I thought he he might have had commercial property. Property. And Absolutely. then and he went to some, you know, yeah. non-recognised lender, but yeah. residential property yeah. in that price. Absolutely. Uh, that yeah, no. But it wasn't fixed. Um, no. Look, Bonnells Bay, it, it's, it, it's close to the central coast there. Um, there. There's the spillover concept from Sydney, and that Sydney, and, and he's obviously seen the heat in the Sydney market, and 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 that does spill over. And and look, I, I'm. You sell the property, it's going to cost you to sell. Um, there's capital gains tax. Well, it's maybe not going to be a capital gain problem by the sounds of things, but no. maybe a small one. Um, I would I would wait a little bit longer, um, and that's just what I would do. I don't like giving too much advice um, mm -hmm. on that. Make sure you've got your numbers in order. Again, I keep mentioning depreciation, but it's the most forgotten deduction. People often miss out on it. So have a look at that. Make sure it's paying for itself while you can with those tax deductions. And I'd hang on for a couple more years just to take advantage of that spill over from Sydney that I think is like a wave that might go out yeah. and, uh, and, and, and start to affect those northern and southern areas that are a little bit of a distance from Sydney. They're not, it's not that far from Sydney. No, no, that's right. And Peter, just, you know, to wrap that up, you know, that uh, coming down from that 8% interest rate down to 5 is going to make all the difference and a 2% equity in that property is really not going to leverage him into anything else. So maybe just hold off again yeah. it's, uh, or get some advice from an yeah. accountant, I think. Now, the questions and conversation have been great so far this evening. And and there is still time for you to join in. So send us a question at property at skynews.com.au or call us on 1300 30 34 35. It's time for another short break. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Your Money, Your Call. I'm Lisa Montgomery from Rizzi Home Loans. And with me on the panel tonight is Noel Petrohilos from BMT Tax Depreciation and Peter Galusis, the property professor. There is still some time for you to call and ask us any question about property, finance or depreciation. And you can do that by dialing 1300 30 34 35 or email us at property at skynews.com.au. And we have another caller and it's Damien from Newcastle, my home, my home city. Damien, Damien, what would you like to ask tonight? Also, uh, hello Lisa, and it's the best city in, in Australia too, isn't it? <laughs> it is indeed, it is indeed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call. Pleasure. Just, um, I'm looking at buying an investment property in the Newcastle or Lake Macquarie area. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago I was looking around Newcastle, around Wickham, Islington, Carrington, mm -hmm. and there were properties, you know, like, I've got quite a few properties around for the very low 200s. Now I've been looking again, there's nothing under 400. No. So Newcastle's had significant growth, probably as much as Sydney, mm. in, in the last four or five years. I, yes. I purchased out in the Hunter Valley, you know, back, I, I decided to buy back, back in 08, 09, um, in the Hunter Valley instead of Newcastle. Um, but now I'm looking at Lake Macquarie because Lake Macquarie hasn't had the growth Newcastle has had, and some areas haven't had any growth at all. And it's only half hour from Newcastle, so I think that's probably where the wave is heading next. I'm just wondering what the panel think about that. Great, Damien. Well, um, so you've got investment property now. You've got some in the Hunter Valley? Yes. Okay, and now you're looking for your next one? I am, yeah. Okay. I, want to, I want to stay in this area. I know you like to diversify and buy in different states, but I really want to buy in, in Lake Macquarie or Newcastle City. If there's more growth to come in Newcastle... Yes. I'd like to buy in Newcastle or the Hunter, uh, sorry, uh, Lake Macquarie because it hasn't had any growth yet. Okay, Damien, we'll go to the panel and we'll ask that question. Excellent. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay, Noel, what are your thoughts? Look, I, I've always been a big fan of Newcastle. I went to university in Newcastle yes. and I fell in love with the place there. Uh, it, look, it's a great 
town with um, a lot of um, diverse um, money coming in from the mines. It's got one of the biggest coal ports. Um, although that, that area is slowing down, it's still a big used coal port. Um, and I think it's the biggest in the southern hemisphere. Um, the whole the hospitality side of things, from the beaches to tourism to the wine, it's got lots of diverse things going for it. So I think it's a really great, um, from a perspective of um, employment drivers, um, areas I, I think Lake Macquarie's good I like the western side of Lake Macquarie where you can still buy in fairly cheap I think uh, around Toronto um, and Wood Rising a few of those areas mm. I really like in between Lake Macquarie and Newcastle, um, Cardiff, Cardiff South, um, those kind of areas. And if you're going to look in the Newcastle side of thing, th there are still um, suburbs in Newcastle where you can buy in the in that price range in the 300,000s and um, places like Gateshead, um, North Lambton, um, out close to the university as well. I think yeah. you can really do well. Uh, look, I, I, I'm all for it. I think there's it's still got a couple of years growth left in it. It's had a good couple of years going. Um, I, I wouldn't be worried at all and I'd be going for it. That's great that's great suggestion I think for Damien what are some of those growth drivers he needs to be looking at Peter well one of the things that I'm uh, it's great to see about Newcastle it reinvented itself yes from a town that was really down and out there for a while university came along injected a lot of young people into the area demand for housing that also brought more uh, hospitality into the area to cater for those people so it's virtually grown on itself so it's noble and I agree with Noel I think Newcastle has more years to grow it's only just beginning you know it's been a long time down here but it's now it's only just beginning its upward phase. Mm. And everyone was quite scared, scared when BHP closed down yes. and, uh, and were worried about that, but it, it just hasn't really looked back since then. Mm, I agree. And um, for me, uh, being a Nova Castrian, mm -hmm. I do like Lake Macquarie. I, I agree with you on the western side. I think um, Edgeworth, Walls End, those areas that are close to the freeway uh, can connect um, individuals with Sydney and with the Central Coast if they're for employment uh, opportunity. I think there's some still some great growth there. Um, I think also certain parts of Newcastle as well. I think uh, one of the things uh, that I would suggest to Damien, he does need to just watch is some of the rental yields in some of these areas. The demand can push that yield down a little bit so I would just uh, caution on checking that out first before he moves forward. Now we've got uh, another email that we're just going to quickly answer answer um, and it's uh, with regard to Sydney's second airport. As the second Sydney airport is approved in Badgerys Creek, what suburbs are best placed to get good capital growth in the next 10 to 15 years? And that's from Amapreet and I'm not sure if that's a gentleman or a lady. So straight over to you to Mr Kalouzis. Okay, thank you very much for that. Again, not Pleasure. Much <laughs> Pleasure. But look, uh, I think to buy in and around Badger Badgery Creek at the moment is, is a bit of a gamble. You need to wait for some master plans to come out. One, one of the things that I'd be looking at is, are they looking at linear development from the outer metropolitan area of Sydney to Badgery Creek, which means buying, in, buying alongside a major highway would be a good idea? Or are, look, or are they looking at radial development around the airport? So uh, look at some state government plans for that area and look at the local shire plans for that area. And then where you can see where areas are going to be rezoned from agricultural or rural to possible residential, that's where you might find the opportunity. So for now, it's not so much buying there, but do your research first. Mm. Is it too early, Noel, to be buying, buying near Badgerys, Badgerys Creek? I think it's too early and too late. Ah. <laughs> and I'll explain. Please explain. <laughs> because you get the first kick when these announcements happen yeah. and then everyone sort of runs and has a look and that, that's the only thing to be careful of. It creates a little bit of a frenzy yeah. and then things start to wear off. Um, but over time, that is going to be a huge employer, that airport. Absolutely. And it's going to feed a lot of money into that area. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's early yet. To, to look into a crystal ball and say you should buy here and here yeah. right next door to the airport but um, and right now it's too late but it was that first kicks happened and everyone's had a look at it and thought I'm just going to wait and see. Mm. It's, it's where you pick next mm. in terms of exactly what you're saying Peter where you actually choose to buy as to just how successful it's going to be for you. I like Hebersham, I like Mount Druitt, I like uh, some of those areas that are undergoing some gentrification at the moment. Mm. Um, that's, that's a good word yes. Yeah that's and I think that key. yeah there's some there's some good opportunity good buying out there but they're, they're being snapped up pretty quickly let me tell you <laughs> okay well there's still time for you
you to ask your question this evening and perhaps win a copy of Margaret's latest book. So if you would like to join in on the conversation, pick up the phone and call us on 1330 34 35 or send us a question at property at skynews.com.au. It's time for another short break. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Your Money, Your Call Property. I'm Lisa Montgomery from Resi and doing a sterling job this evening is Noel Petrahelis from BMT Tax Depreciation and Peter Kalusis, the Property Professor. And if you would like our help this evening, simply call us on 1300 30 34 35 or email us at property at skynews.com.au. Now we're going to go straight to an email and it's from Warren and he writes, we began investing two years ago and have two investment properties, one in Taralgon, Victoria, and one in Kalanga, Queensland. We've, we're considering downsizing our principal place of residence, which will leave us debt free with about $400,000 in equity. What would be your advice and the best way to invest into the future with this equity? Okay. It's an interesting question, isn't it? And I think we have got a lot of folks out there that are kind of getting to that point where they've um, coming to the end of their property investing journey, they own everything, and then they've got more equity and they can't stop. Peter, what do you think, uh, I think Warren should um, do? I mean, we can ch chat generally here, <laughs> yes. but I think you need to get some specific advice, some good Absolutely. advice. Mm. Accountant, maybe a property investment advisor if you're looking to buy more property. Uh, financial advisor. Uh, because if you're getting to that stage of your life, you don't want to be making mistakes. Because when you're young, you can make a mistake and recover. Yes. But when you're getting to the end and you've paid off properties and your house is freehold and you might be 55, 60, 65, pretty hard to find a plan B. So you need to get it right by paying for good advice. I agree. And it's a bit about lifestyle too, Noel, isn't it? It is a bit about lifestyle. And look, my, my bit of advice here would be don't go and dump it all into one property. No. Um, spread your risk and diversify. Um, go for that lower price bracket and look and look outside the square. Yeah. Um, even look in some of the regional areas. I know the, the metro areas have done really well in the last 12 months, but um, Target that lower price point and um, stronger yield and, and spread your risk. It doesn't all have to be in the one state. Well, let me ask you this question. What about his existing properties? What if there's opportunity for him to maybe put a granny flat or improve on those properties without going to the expense of buying a new one? Definitely. What about that as an option? And what about the depreciation there? Look, granny flats are really trendy at the moment. Um, they're being supported by the, by the councils. Usually you can get through with quite quick planning. So that, that part of it's great. From a depreciation perspective they're fantastic yeah. and a cash flow perspective they're fantastic just make sure and it sounds like in those two areas that they are areas that would uh, they would ha be able to have a granny flat yeah um, from the depreciation they're brand new properties so there's fantastic depreciation usually they get a 10 or 12 percent yield on expense because you've got the land there already mm -hmm. um, so yeah that's an option for, for wealth generation why not well let's leave that with Warren and he can explore his options yeah. okay we have another caller and that's Melanie from the Central Coast Melanie Melanie, how can we help you this evening? Oh, hi. We've got a one investment property and we've just releasing about $50,000 worth of equity and just looking at um, the, the best place to, to invest that. We're looking at Woodbridge in Queensland. Um, we found two properties next to each other and we were wondering um, whether that might be something worth holding on to and developing later. But we we're just interested in your thoughts um, on Woodbridge as an area. So you're looking at uh, purchasing both properties? Is that yeah, right? Okay. That was our thought, yeah. Okay. And they're residential properties? Yeah, they're residential and the, the rent would cover the, the mortgage payments. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go to the panel and I'm hoping that the panel know where Woodbridge uh, is situated. But before I go to the panel, Melanie, maybe you yep. might want to give us a bit of an idea where Woodbridge is. Yeah, it's in the, the Logan Shire, so uh, it's in that southeast um, Queensland sort of corridor. Excellent. Thank you very much. We know Logan, so that's fine. Thanks, Melanie. <laughs> okay. I'll go to the panel for you. Okay. Straight to you, Peter. Your thoughts. Okay. So, Melanie, I know Margaret loves the Logan Shire, <laughs> but I'm going to stick to some of the other aspects to look at other than just the suburbs. So, uh, so far as the street is concerned, what are the other houses like in the street? I think we've... She's oh, gone. She's gone, okay. yes. So when you're looking at... So it's not just the suburb, but we need to be specific about the street. So preferably a wide street, tree-lined street, other nice property so that your development's not the nicest uh, property surrounded by other 
older style homes, uh, and also look at the type of properties. If tax, if tax is an issue, newer properties for uh, depreciation. If you're looking for development, then you're probably looking to knock down the property, so you don't want to be paying too much for the property where you're going to be just knocking down a house and losing thirty or forty, fifty thousand dollars. So, a number of factors to consider, not just the suburb, but the specific street and also the type of property. Mm, good suggestions. Your thoughts, Noel? I think the Logan Shire is a really exciting place and it's, it's really sparking up. There's good population growth there. Um, you can still buy in relatively cheap, so it's really exciting. Um, two blocks alongside each other is, I mean, I, I've targeted those kind of places before. Mm. Just check the local council with what you can do because there are usually a lot of restrictions there. Um, and and just, just run it by a town planner mm. and make sure that you can do some stuff with it later because it, having two blocks alongside each other can really open up some doors. If they want to go down that path of developing, make sure they stand on their own two feet as they are. And the lady said that, it, look, they were, they were cash flow neutral or mm. cash flow positive as they stood. So that's, that. look, that sounds okay. The only uh, negative with that to be careful of is it does put a lot of eggs in one basket. It does, and that's a good point that you make. Uh, I think Melanie's fairly switched on, though, mm. in relation to what she's, what she's wanting to do. So I think, you know, good area, good opportunity. Let's just watch to make sure that there is demand for what she may want to put onto uh, that block at a, a later date if she does develop it. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, some good suggestions for Melanie. Okay, Definitely. to another email, and from Andrew this time. He writes, this is an interesting one, the fence in my investment property is badly in need of replacing. My questions are, is the fence replacement a tax deduction or do I claim depreciation on it? Secondly, is it the norm that the neighbour pays half and what can be done if they don't want to chip in even if the current fence is a safety hazard? Noel Petrohelos, your thoughts on this particular question? Sure, look, it's quite simple. If you're replacing the whole fence, then it's a capital improvement and therefore it depreciates. The problem with a fence is it's a 40 year effective life at 2.5% per year. So you're only claiming a little bit per year. Yeah. If they're able to uh, claim that as a repair, then that, that whole amount is deductible. So if they're just able to repair the fence, it'll work out better um, for those reasons. As far as paying half. I've always gone to my neighbours and said, can you pay half? And they've always been fairly open to doing that, especially with an old rundown fence. Mm. If it is made of something hazardous and you can somehow confirm that, then you can actually claim it as an environmental protection activity if it's made of asbestos or something like that. Or, and she mentioned the word hazardous, so I'm not sure whether she's talking about the material or yeah, no, I it's think it's just a nails hazard. sticking yeah. out of it yeah. and things like that. So yeah. therefore, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that is a capital improvement and can be written off um, and depreciated. Mm. Yeah. Good answer. Anything to add to that, Peter? <laughs> uh, look, every state has their own um, fences regulations. Like in South Australia, we have the Fences Act. Basically, yes, the owner, uh, the neighbours need to share 50%, providing the fence is at uh, six foot high. Anything higher than that, if one particular person wants, they need to pay the extra. But just check your rules, and that's a very good point you bring up about the hazardous materials. Yes. There might be some money somewhere to help you get rid of that fence that might be riddled with asbestos. Absolutely. Good answers, gentlemen. Well, it's time for another short break, but there's still time for you to ask your questions. So please join in on the conversation by calling us on 1300 30 34 35 or send us a question at property at skynews.com.au. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Property Edition of Your Money, Your Call. I'm Lisa Montgomery from Resi Home Loans and with me in the studio is Noel Petrohelos from BMT Tax Depreciation and Peter Kalouzis, the Property Professor. We are here to answer your questions, so if you have one, simply call us on 1300 30 34 35 or email us at property at skynews.com.au. And we've got time for another email and it's from Taylor in Brisbane. Uh, it's an interesting one. He's writing to us. He's moving to Brisbane for work and wanted to know if it's a good time uh, to uh, in the market to buy in at the moment or should he rent and buy elsewhere. He was looking at apartments in Newstead, Tenerife uh, area and uh, or would he be better buying a house further out of the city. Okay now it's an interesting one because when you move to a, a city for the first time it's hard to really know where you want to live isn't it? Mm. Peter your thoughts? I, I think 
uh, it's a good time to be buying into Brisbane because Brisbane has been so soft for so many years. So it, it's certainly due for a, a rise. But that doesn't mean that every house and every street and every suburb in Brisbane is going to do well. Mm -hmm. So you've got to pick your suburbs. I like the suburbs that he selected. Uh, he mentioned apartments. I wouldn't be going for new apartments in those areas. And he also asked about units versus houses. Uh, generally, I go for houses, but I, a unit in a good location is much better than a house in a poor location because right. you can never change location. Yeah. So get the location right, and then you can look at the, the style of property, unit or house, which is really going to be dependent on how much uh, they can spend on the property. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Do you think you should rent first, Noel? Look, if you don't know the market um, and you're not feeling confident with throwing that money in, then yes, um, I, I've always gone to a market and rented for a little while just to have a look around, around to see what he's, uh, what he's chasing. If he's looking for a home, that's really important that he's going to buy something um, you know, that, he's, that he's comfortable with. Those areas that he mentioned, I think they're very close in the city. They're an expensive buy-in. Um, and, and then he mentions uh, a house outside or a little bit further out. Yeah. I'd be going down that path first if they were the only two options. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, though, from a depreciation perspective, units do, do a lot better um, if they were to become an investment because of all the common areas you can claim a loss sure. uh, for the wear and tear on all the lifts and driveways and light fittings that run through all of those common areas. Just quickly, Noel, before we wrap up, do you think maybe he could just rent and buy an investment property and stay living in the area that he wants to live in and buy a property that's going to appreciate? Without a doubt, and, and a lot of people are doing that these yeah. days. They're, they're renting and buying an investment property because getting putting their money in an investment property with the extra tax credits they got, it's, it's much more affordable. It's interesting, isn't it? I think we're going to see a lot more people these days days do exactly that live where they want to live yes but buy an investment property perhaps as their first or uh, first first foray into into property purchasing and and take the benefits of that because the other thing that I think we must also remember that if you do that and you've never owned a property before and you buy it as a, a by your first home as an investment as long as you don't live in it you can still claim the, uh, first the first home buyers, yeah, buyers grant yeah. down the track and not a lot of people know that so, so you never had a home yeah mm. that's right but you must check the OSR in your state yeah. but that's it's, it's I think a smart way to have your cake and eat it too really yep. it is best of both worlds why not <laughs> I think so I think so okay well that's all we have time for this evening which brings us to the winner of Margaret's latest book how to achieve property success and I think we all agree that uh, it's the first caller that we had tonight which was Grant and he was calling uh, he was getting some advice I think from a About property Murray group Bridge. yep okay Murray Bridge that's right now all you need to do is email me at asklisa at resi.com.au that's asklisa all one word at resi r-e-s-i dot com dot au and I'll arrange for that book to be sent to you Grant thank you so much for your questions this evening and thanks also to my wonderful guests Noel Petrahilas from BMT Tax Depreciation and I did not falter on your name no, once tonight you you and of course Peter Kalouz is the property professor thank you so much Margaret will be back in the chair next week so make sure you tune in I'm Lisa Montgomery from Resi Home Loans enjoy your week the information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Okay.